Ah, the ancient times. We think of the great pyramids of Egypt and the strong city-states of Mesopotamia, but we also overlook a very important nation, and that is the Indus Valley Civilization. As one who has gone through school, I can assure you that most likely you've only got a paragraph to a couple pages about the Indus Valley in your books, but that makes them look like just a mere footnote in history, not the practical Atlantis of the ancient world that they are. So let's take a little bit of background information. The Indus River starts in the hills of the Himalayas and runs through Pakistan to the Indian Ocean. This river is considered one of the most reliable rivers in the world as it floods twice a year. With its fertile silt coming like clockwork, a group of people settled here and began to farm the rich land. These people would go on to create arguably the most advanced civilization till Rome. The Indus Valley Civilization is officially marked to start at 3300 BC, but Many archaeological discoveries suggest that the ethnic group had been there since at least 7000 BC, living in unorganized farming villages. The Indus Valley Civilization covered a large amount of land stretching from the northern part of Pakistan all the way down to the Indian coast to the modern city of Surat. The population of the Indus Valley at its height was 5 million people. That's more than 112 nations that currently exist today. And with this large population came the need to house these people, and house these people they did. The Indus Valley would build cities with uh, waterworks that make nations like Mesopotamia, Assyria, and others look like mere amateurs. Even in comparison to the Egyptians, they superseded them. So what made them so supreme in their waterworks? Well, the Indus Valley was the forerunner for water control and sanitation. Unlike most cities, the Indus Valley cities had bathrooms in every house in the city. They also were the first to use public restrooms. With the existence of uh, bathrooms means that that stuff had to go somewhere. And that is where another achievement is made by the Indus Valley civilization. They had sewer systems. These things weren't no wriggly clay piping like the Hittites had. No, these were full-on stone brick, exactly cut gutters, tunnels, pipelines, and canals. This would lead the waste out of the city in a clean, organized manner. The smaller villages, who did not have such expert masons to make a large sewer system, had to use soak H jars. A soak H jar is just what it sounds like. Soak, age, jars. The jars would be filled with layers of gravel, charcoal, sand, etc., and would sit and have the solid waste disintegrate. You could either replace the jars or have one that drains away. They did more than just waste and fresh water control. Major cities like Harappa and Mohenjo-daro had large public works. One such is located in Mohenjo-daro, the Great Bath. It is a massive rectangular pool, and personally I agree with John Green from Crash Course when he stated that the name archaeologists gave it is kinda disappointing and bland. An open letter to historians. Dear historians, the Great Bath? Really? The Great Bath? I'm trying to make history fascinating and you give me a term that evokes scented candles, bath salts, and Frederick Fakai hair products? I know sometimes the crushingly boring names of history aren't your fault. You didn't name the Federalist Papers or the Austro-Hungarian Empire or Adam Smith. But when you do get a chance to name something, you go with the Great Bath, not the epic bath of Mohenjo-daro, or the bath to end all baths, or the pool that ruled, or the moist mystery of Mohenjo-daro, or the wet wonder, the Great Bath? Really? You can do better. Best wishes, John Green. I prefer his suggestion of the moist mystery of Mohenjo-daro. Now, we don't actually know what the bath was used for since we don't have the language deciphered yet. but. Since Hinduism was most likely affected by these people, historians guess that it could be used for spiritual cleaning, seeing how the Hindu caste system is based on spiritual cleanliness. We also know they traded with the outside world. Why? Because the people of the Indus Valley had wax stamps to seal documents for trade, kind of like the ones used in medieval Europe. And these uh, stamps are not found only in the Indus Valley, but in Mesopotamia. See, the stamps were made by stone or wood block cuts that you would press into the wax, 
and we found these block cuts in Mesopotamia and in the Indus Valley region. So what did they trade? Well, they traded cotton goods, something so important to the world economy that the British in the 1800s would invade India and spill the most blood per colony on maintaining control of India. So what happened to this advanced society? Well, they were peaceful, and there is almost no archaeological traces of weapons found in the Indus Valley, and their culture is evident of that. When the first cities were being discovered, it was theorized maybe it was a civilization of child-minded people, because instead of finding spears and pottery, they found marbles, dice, and chessboard. The Indus Valley civilizations were pacifist, and that doesn't tend to be the best defensive strategy. Now, we can't be sure since we have no written record that we can read, but it's believed that a mix of rivers changing courses and an invasion of tribes from the Caucasus region brought an end to this thousand year old civilization. They just had too much pressure brought on them on the wrong time, and it suggested that they just moved to the rural countryside, and eventually they were bred out of existence as the modern Indians have almost no genetic relationship with them. This would leave the Indus Valley without a major civilization for hundreds of years and with a foreshadow of what would happen to the world in 1177 BC. So I want to thank you all for your support. I'm getting better feedback than I ever got on my first channel and I already have uh, three collabs in progress. So I want to lay out a schedule for you. As of upload, I have uh, three planned uh, videos coming out. Well, three planned collabs, I should say. One, which is a collab with Wonder Waffle Mapping, talking about Egypt. He will cover the early stages of the empire, and I will cover the late. Then I have one with Centriel, where I will cover the history of the Great North War, and he will cover two alternate scenarios that the war could have gone if Sweden won. And then I have one with Italian mapper Chris, and we are going to do some uh, controversial topics, but historically uh, based about our countries. Something that we don't like to talk about too much, but it needs to be talked about. So, with those three in mind, I have a busy schedule, but I'll be gone next week, so there won't be any videos coming out for at least a week after this. But uh, thank you for watching, and if you like it, subscribe and share it with others who like history.